on a few occasions, I've completely overhauled a story. Uh, one example is uh, a story that became the story Smoke uh, in my book Troublemakers. The original story was called The Backyard, and what I had was a story told from the point of view of Rebecca, who is uh, a mother of a, of a 30 year old son named Keith who comes home from college, uh, and she has a dog named Tex, and who's digging up bones from the backyard. After I'd written quite a bit of the story, I ended up putting it aside. Right now, I can't remember why I reconfigured it the way I did, except that I felt that the story lacked humor. I wasn't crazy about the tone of the story. I, I didn't like the direction the story was going. Uh, this is from the backyard. Her son, Keith, sat at the kitchen table and smoked a cigarette. He was 30, still in college, and he'd come home to be with Rebecca when she went back to the doctor in two days. But he'd also made an appointment for himself to see Dr. Hashimoto, a psychiatrist, about getting a prescription for Prozac. A manic depressive he had told his mother over the phone. Since when? He sighed into the mouthpiece, an exaggeration of life's futility. Now he sat hunched at the table, flicking ashes into his palm, talking to the dog. Don't come near me, he said. You're filthy. After writing maybe five or six pages of the story, maybe even a little more than that, I ended up putting it aside um, because it just didn't seem to be working. I like certain elements in the story. I like the dog, and that was really probably why I began writing the story in the first place, was the idea of this dog in the backyard. Uh, digging up something, uh, digging up bones, um, and and that's why the story was originally called The Backyard, because I knew that that would play an important role in the story. I think the time between when I wrote The Backyard and, and when I started writing Smoke, I mean, it was, it, it was at least six months, if not longer. There's just this gap of time where I set it aside, but there were just these certain elements, I think, in The Backyard that just, you know, I like the idea of text digging up things in the yard, and I wanted that. I like the idea of somebody revealing that they're manic depressive, even though they, they may not be. And for whatever reason, the mother just, as a point of view, just was not working for me. I, mean, I wanted it to be a little bit more reflective. I wanted it, on the one hand, to be as close to the 13-year-old as I could possibly get, but at the same time allow myself, uh, as a writer, the possibility to uh, write a complex sentence. And so I think it was thinking of those sorts of things and then trying to think of, well, what, how can I lighten it up? Um, the mother wasn't going to do it. Third person wasn't going to do it. Um, and the basic situation I'd set up for these characters uh, wasn't going, going to do it. When I came back to the story, I had actually changed locations from when I first began writing the story. I was in a different city. Um, and I came back to it. I was looking at another story of mine, a story called The Greatest Goddamn Thing, which is first person, present tense. And it's, uh, it, it's all in a self-contained period of time. It's very linear, um, and I thought that that was the, the, the kind of tone and the shape that I wanted for this story. I liked what I had done in The Greatest Goddamn Thing with capturing the voice of a, of a 16-year-old, and so I thought, well, what if I tried to do it with a 13-year-old, um, but, but a little bit more reflective, a little bit more distance. And so that's what I did. I just went into that story with this, with this uh, new voice and began rewriting the story with the dog. The dog uh, appears. Uh, right at the very beginning of the story, and then I was going to see where it would take me. Let me read the opening of Smoke, which, while you may not see the distance so much in this particular passage, uh, one thing that uh, you probably will notice is that the syntax is more complex than the syntax of a 13-year-old. Of a Mom said she needed to talk to me this minute. She said that it was really important and couldn't wait, but I said not now. I opened the sliding glass door, walked outside, and found Tex, my dog, who had spent the better part of these past two weeks digging up the backyard. He held a bone lengthwise in his mouth, his fourth one today. He dropped it onto a small, neat pile next to the gas grill. He licked my hand, and I pointed at his nose and said, sit, give me a paw, but he just tilted his head, then ran away. We found Tex two years ago, a pup smack in the middle of a downpour, a wet dog the size and color of a meatloaf. He was lumbering across the expressway, his dark head hung low, too depressed by the rain and lightning to care about the cars and trucks speeding toward him. Dad pulled over and Mom opened her door, and together we lured him into our car and into our lives with the promise of a good home and table food. Eventually certain things ended up creeping back in. The backyard plays an important role in that story. 
um, the sister, uh, Hank's sister, uh, starts claiming that she's manic depressive. And so I found that the story just sort of reconfigured itself. It's not that I was consciously sitting there saying, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I just needed a different way into the story. And it took me, you know, three or four months of just setting the story aside to be able to come back and say, okay, this is what I want to do with the story now. One of the reasons why I wanted a little bit of distance was to be able to uh, bring the narrator to a point of having uh, insight that perhaps he couldn't necessarily articulate as a 13 year old but that could be articulated within the context of the story. In other words, the character may sense uh, these things uh, but as an author I can articulate them for him even though he can't articulate them. And so uh, it's useful I, for me at least to have that kind of distance so that when we get to the end of the story uh, at a point where things are about ready to sort of uh, uh, crescendo or rise, uh, I can, uh, I can, I can perhaps, you know, bring a, a moment of insight to the character that uh, that the character had at that time, but just couldn't uh, voice for himself. So uh, I'd like to read uh, just a short paragraph from the end of the story that that does that. I think hopefully. Uh, in a small way. Dad was sitting now, resting against the grill, moving his hand through the air. He was petting the ghost of a dog he'd once known, and all the way across the yard I was touching that same dog's skull, still lodged in the earth. I tried to imagine the sorts of things firing inside Dad's head, and so I looked at Tex, concentrating on the bones beyond his fur and skin, beyond the Tex I knew, the dog beneath the dog, but I couldn't imagine anything at all. There was no dog beneath the dog. There was only Tex. One of the reasons why I made the decision to change the, the voice of the story, to change the point of view, to sort of reconfigure it, is that the early version, uh, the version that was titled The Backyard, just seemed like a story to me. And once I found Hank's voice, it began to seem like an experience to me. To me, it comes down to an issue of immediacy which is this is the story that draws me in and the story in which I feel that I'm a participant. Uh, it's that experience where you're reading a story and suddenly you forget that you're reading a story and that's one of the big differences for me in terms of bringing a story to life which is that I want it to be an experience. I want it to be an experience for me. I want it to be an experience for the reader. If it just seems like a story then I feel that it'll be forgettable. Uh, to both myself and to the reader at the end. I want, I want a visceral reaction on the part of the reader. Um, I want, at a certain point, uh, you know, their heart rate to go up when my character's heart rate's going up. Uh, and once that happens, uh, then I feel like the story's actually alive.